I was going through a divorce and I hadn't worked in almost a year and I was almost out of money. I was trying to think what would really make me happy and I thought if I had some property I could go to the bank, mortgage part of the property, put the money in my pocket and then I'd move to Los Angeles and get an acting career going. And when I had that thought I looked out the car window and I was in Concord, California about 35 miles from here and saw the moon and thought there's a lot of property <laughs> and I instantly after I had that thought remembered audited in a political science class at Linfield College in Oregon in 1968 where we were studying the brand new 1967 Outer Space Treaty. Um, and I'd remembered something about Article 2 stating that nations couldn't own the land, so it intrigued me enough. I went to uh, Diablo Valley Community College in Concord, uh, went to their reference library and looked up the treaty, and sure enough, Article 2 states, no nation by appropriation shall have sovereignty or control over any of the satellite bodies, and simply spoke it means they can't create or effectively enforce laws. Mm -hmm. So I went and did some research on all private property claims that I could find since property claims have been available on the planet. Mm -hmm. I found 196 different social organizations, mm -hmm. cities, counties, states, countries, that allowed citizens to claim ownership to different lands. The precept of law has been accepted. Mm. There's no standardized rules. Mm. Because of that, I just made up my own. Um, and because the precept of law is accepted, then my claim of ownership should be accepted too because these are unowned properties. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you just started? Well, what I did is I went, uh, I went to my brother's office and sat down in the back room and started writing out a um, um, declaration of ownership to the United Nations. And in it, I merely stated that I'm claiming the moon of Earth, the other eight planets and their moons, and if they had a legal problem with that, to please let me know. And I've never heard from them. No, never, never. Not on that subject, right. The um, fact is, I've never heard from the United Nations at all. And a lot of people will say, well, just because they didn't respond to you doesn't mean you own it. Well, I did my due diligence. They should have done theirs. They haven't. So because they fell short of responding to my request, which was specific, that if they didn't respond to me, I was going to start subdividing and selling the property to anybody that wanted it. Let's say there were a group of people in England mm -hmm. that wanted to come to the United States and start doing whatever they wanted to on any property they so chose to do it on. The resultant factor of that would be the United States government would then attack those individuals vehemently and tell them to get away. Yeah. Well, we're no different. Um, this is legally claimed property. Mm -hmm. I have a legal right to sell it. If I didn't, I wouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. um, when the sales go through, and Every time we get a media attention of any type whatsoever, our sales spike hmm. everywhere. It hmm. doesn't matter what part of the world that particular piece of media is in, hmm. the sales will spike. Hmm. So people are definitely interested in owning land in outer space. We think they want that because it's the last frontier. We know that about 17% of the people that buy it from us buy it for its novelty value. Okay. Um, we also know that 42% of the people that have purchased land from us since 1980 hmm. have asked us to register that property in some form of a trust. Okay. Now to us that means they're more serious about it. Mm. We also have three former presidents of the United States that are property owners. Okay. Uh, that would be Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, and one of our customers bought George W. Bush a piece of property. So he, for I me. reluctantly sent it. Um, so he's a property as well. So th that raises another interesting question. Um, do you have any rules? You know, is there a, a Moon Owners Association where you, you can't sell yeah. Actually, we have one better than that. Okay. Um, in 2001, I received about 163,000 emails from different customers that wanted to know how on earth we were ever going to provide protection from Earth-based governments. Mm -hmm. So I gave it some thought, and after about three days, the only conclusion I could come to is we needed to form a democratic republic nation. Okay. So we created the galactic government. and. It took us three years to write the Constitution for it because I wanted it a specific way. Mm -hmm. So I got the help of a constitutional law professor here in the United States who's now retired. His name's uh, Timothy Myers. And when we got the Constitution done, it was finished in 2004. Mm -hmm. In March of 2004, we put the Constitution online for our 3.7 million property owners at that time mm -hmm. to vote yes or no for ratification. We ended up with a 172,562 votes for ratification and five votes against. Mm. So now we're a fully ratif constitutionally ratified sovereign nation. Um, we have our own currency. We created a currency called the Delta. It's backed 
by helium-3. Okay. Helium-3 reserves on the moon, there's 100 million metric tons of helium-3 on the moon. So what we did is um, we attempted to join the International Monetary Fund as a government, and we did that because if they accept you as a member, they also take your currency. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't want the currency for ourselves. We want to be able to help humans on this planet. Mm -hmm. um, and the way we want to help them is we would like to build 1,500 desalination plants around the world. Mm -hmm. um, Water is the most scarce commodity on this planet. Um, there are still people in developed nations that don't have good drinkable water. Um, and what this would do is you could literally turn the Serengeti Desert into an oasis. That's brilliant. Yeah. So, but, you know, so say I bought a piece of the moon, do I don't have to buy a mining permit from you? Well, if you go to the moon and start mining on your property, yeah. you don't have to necessarily buy a permit as an yeah. individual property owner, but you do have to pay 10% of the gross value of that extracted to the galactic government. So, okay, so say 10 years' time, the Chinese get up there and they start mining, what can you do? Well, we, there's a few things we can do. Okay. In um, 2008, the president of the People's Republic of China came out and said, uh, we're going to be on the moon by 2012 mining helium-3. So I wrote him a letter. I'm also the elected president of the galactic government until we hold our first general election. Okay. Um, it should happen in the next year or so. Um, so the letter stated very simply, we don't have a problem with you taking your country to the moon and mining helium-3. You will have to have a licensing agreement in place prior to leaving. If you do not, and please understand this is not a threat of war, it's merely an opportunity for you to accept certain concrete rules that are in place. Your craft won't make it to its destination. We have an ability right now, the galactic government does, right. in 25 different locations on this planet, we can stop any craft we want to from going to our properties. If their intent is to go up and start taking things that are not theirs. But it isn't that an uh, act of war. We are a constitutionally ratified sovereign nation. And yeah. because of that, we have certain rights. Mm -hmm. Our rights are to protect our properties from intrusion from other governments. Has anyone actually tried to stop you, you know, with this? I would, no. Well, I, I can say this. Um, in Sweden and in Germany, there were two lawsuits from resellers that I had in those countries. Mm -hmm. um, the government sued them, or was attempting to sue them, for fraud, for selling something yeah. they didn't own. Well, they bought it from me, so they did own it. Mm. Um, and in both cases, the case was thrown out of court because of lack of jurisdiction. Mm. Yeah. England, Sweden, United States, Mexico, Brazil, any country on this planet has no right to anything in outer space. The, the signatories on the Outer Space Treaty of 1967 have the right to do exploration. There's nothing in there that gives them the right to do anything of permanence whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And nowhere in that treaty does it mention anything about individuals. Genius. <laughs> I got Great. lucky. Yeah. So, um, the inevitable question, um, how much does it cost? Oh, it's pretty pricey. Um, an acre on any property that we sell, and mm -hmm. the properties that are currently being offered by the Lunar Embassy are the Moon of Earth, mm -hmm. Mars, Venus, Io, one of Jupiter's moons, mm -hmm. and Mercury. We also have 16 separate moons that are for sale in their entirety, from $25,000 to $450,000. <laughs> um, it's nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents per acre. an acre, plus a dollar fifty one lunar tax mm -hmm. or planetary tax, depending on what property you purchase. Um, it's a one time tax; you're never taxed again. Mm -hmm. In fact, as the galactic government is not allowed to tax its citizens ever, unless we're under direct conflict with another nation mm -hmm. in a wartime setting, setting. And then all we can do is take five percent of the total monies generated from the properties they live on. Mm -hmm. So it's quite reasonably cheap. Ah, yeah. yeah, you know. Actually, the largest piece of property we sell is six million acres, and that's um, what is it? It's fifteen million dollars, okay. and we'll finance that for forty years. And um, what's the you know? Again, I'm not the IRS, um, but what's the biggest amount of land you've sold? We sold a state. It's not a state, but a, a state. state size piece of property, which is two point six six million acres. 
Um, and when we sold it, it was back in 1999. And at that time we were asking, I think it was, well, what we ended up getting was $158,000 for it. Wow. Um, now that same piece of property would cost you $7 million. So there is like a lunar property. Well, sure. The boom. first the first properties that were offered when I started selling this in 1980, you received a, a deed and a Constitution Bill of Rights, which mm -hmm. is now our codes, covenants, and restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, and it was ten dollars for seventeen hundred and seventy-seven point five eight acres. I don't. If you read uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, yes. Okay, you know the number forty-two. Yes. Okay. Well, I had a group at Stanford contact me six years ago, and they wanted to know if I would sell them 42 acres. And I said, no, but the square root of 1,777.58 is 42.42. So maybe you should just buy one of those. <laughs> so um, did the different parts of the moon cost different? No. No, it's just the same. Flat rate on all properties sold by the did, lunar rooms. Did you read, you know, when there was talk of there being water on the moon, I don't know, that's kind of may have been disproved as we speak. Um, did you kind of regret that you hadn't charged more for that part of the moon? We don't sell anything that has water on it. Okay. Um, the polar regions, the yeah. north and southern polar regions, okay. have frozen water ice. Okay. We know that's true. Okay. So how come you don't sell the polar regions? Because <clears throat> there's a movie that Arnold Schwarzenegger did when he went to Mars. Total Recall. Total Great Recall. Great right? movie. Uh, yeah, fun mm -hmm. movie. Um, and that was the key element that made me decide not to sell the polar regions. I didn't want a corporation going in there, owning mm -hmm. all the water. And then when colonization starts, gouging everybody for this life-producing mm. material. Mm. Um, I've turned down, since I've started this, about $800 million for properties with water ice on it. And what kind of people are trying to buy this? Well, our demographics run the gamut. Mm. Uh, the youngest person that was a property owner got his property the day he was born. Mm -hmm. um, the oldest person we know of is 97. Um, socioeconomically, we run the gamut. Mm -hmm. um, we have doctors, lawyers, nurses, waiters, waitresses, uh, uh, garbage men. Mm -hmm. Any walk of life that you have, we have them in our midst as property owners. Any celebrities or anything like that? Oh, we have a few. There's 675 celebrities that have properties, and some of those are George Lucas, Ron Howard, Tom Hanks, Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman, John Travolta, Clint Eastwood, Barbara Walters, Queen Latifah, Willie Nelson, the list goes on and on. Willie and on. Nelson, I bet his property on the moon would be exciting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I sent a letter to President Barack Obama in 2010 offering the United States government $125 trillion worth of our currency. Mm -hmm. um, to, to bail out, to them. Bail out yeah. them from this financial mess that all the banks mm -hmm. got us into. Um, and I got no response. Mm. Hard to believe, right? Mm. Um, we've also made the same offer to England, mm -hmm. Greece, Turkey, and any other ailing financially, ailing mm. country in this planet. So have you, because um, obviously you're the owner of the moon, how much of it have you got and which part of the moon are you on and is there a reason for that? Sure. Yeah. All the areas I haven't sold, I own. Mm -hmm. So you, you and the reason I own it is because I haven't sold it. Yeah. So you, you're not like keeping a bit for a golf course oh, up there? Oh, yeah. Sure. I'm keeping some for my family. Yeah. You know. totally, yeah. Um, Would you like a golf course up there because you love golf? So. Actually, in, in 1998, Sweden, uh, there was a sports organization in Sweden mm -hmm. that bought a 1,777.58 acre piece of property. And they wanted to know if it was okay to put a golf course on it. I said, yes, but it has to be indoors. <laughs> Why? Because if you have a, a one iron... Mm -hmm. you'll put the ball in orbit. Oh, yeah. There's no gravity. I mean, it's a sixth of what it is here. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have club head speed anywhere near 125 miles an hour and the ball takes off at 200 miles an hour, it's gone, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Yeah. You might get a hole in one on the sun. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you actually start spreading to the other planets? Well, since my claim of ownership was for the moon of Earth, and mm -hmm. the other eight planets and their oh, moons, yeah, yeah, yeah. initially, it was just inevitable that I was going to offer property on others. Mm. The reason I don't offer property on, let's say, Neptune or uh, Uranus or... Jupiter. 
or Jupiter. Well, Jupiter's a yes, gas planet. They can't even verify there's a solid base to the planet at it's all. Amazing. And with that in mind, how could you possibly subdivide it? Anything mm. you would do would be a lie. Mm. Mm. So we don't even touch Jupiter or Saturn. Mm. But their moons, you know, there's 150 moons in this solar system. So when do you expect there will be exploration on the moon? Like, well, in 2011, we set up a basis with six different scientists around the world that are working for the Lunar Embassy and Galactic Government in, mm -hmm. in cooperation with um, the first ever anti-gravitic propulsion system. I don't have the technical yeah. information, nor yeah. would I go into it if I did, because yeah. it's kind of top secret. Okay. Um, the basic concept is every planetary body has a magnetic field. Mm -hmm. Some are stronger than others, some are weaker. Um, if you were to take two magnets and turn them around and start to, and you put them on a table and start pushing one to the other, and they were uh, the same polar ends, mm -hmm. they would push apart. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the basic it's the concept. Basic concept. Push away from the planetary yeah. body you're leaving and pull towards the planetary body you're going to. Okay. So again, I'm not from the tax authorities of Earth. Understood. But how much money have you made yourself? Uh, just under eleven million dollars so far. I've spent $9.5 million so far on this project for the propulsion it, system. Yeah. And the reason for that is the top speed on this propulsion system is supposed to be somewhere near 0 0.99 the speed of light. Wow. That's if this actually comes out, and the theoretical aspect of all this project has been completed for about four months, mm -hmm. the problem we're having is throttling the mechanism. What, slowing it down? Yes. Yeah. Because if you were to... At 0.99 the speed of light, if you were to take off from this patio right here, and you could do that because it doesn't burn anything, mm -hmm. it just pushes yeah, away. Yeah. Um, it would take 1.43 seconds to get to the moon. How? Yeah. How long? Eight seconds to get to the sun. Yeah. yeah. yeah you can go to Pluto in three hours. So you've never been threatened or anything. Like oh. That? Yeah. I've had four bomb threats since I started this. Um, they're always going to send me a bomb in the mail. Every time I get one, I turn it over to the FBI, and they look wow. at me like, what do you do? I sell property on the moon, Mars, Venus, Io, Mercury. Do you have any ideas? It's probably just, well, three of the bomb threats came from colleges. Okay. So one was in England, Okay. one was in Sweden, and one was in Germany. Uh, and the last one came out of Australia. And you just think it's someone who's just disgruntled with you or just... Well, people assign certain values to things that we know and love in our life, and a lot of people love the moon. Hmm. Um, and if they would just calm down for a second and understand, I'm not trying to take anybody for anything. Hmm. I'm merely providing them a service where if they want to buy an acre of land, which is 43,550 square feet of property, and they have all mineral rights that go with it for $24, it seems like a bargain to me. It's a bargain. <laughs> you know, find a piece of property like yeah. that on Earth. What we want to do is we want to build a pyramid city, which is three kilometers by three kilometers at its base and 2.5 mm -hmm. kilometers in height. Uh, the first two levels will be used for agriculture and livestock because you mm -hmm. have to have a way to feed and, and supplement everybody's nutritional needs. Um, then the other floors would be set for anything that you find on Earth. Why the pyramid shape, particularly? Any reason? I think it's symbolic of where we came from. Mm -hmm. I think the reason that the Egyptians built the pyramids is I'm a firm believer that we've been visited and are visited constantly by mm -hmm. extraterrestrial beings. Mm -hmm. um, have you been visited? Yeah, I have to talk about it. You know. Uh, the only reason I'm hesitating is because as soon as you say something about being involved with extraterrestrials, mm -hmm. people Amazing. immediately put you in this category, well, he's a wacko, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I'm an educated individual. Um, I have a PhD in marketing, an MBA. Um, I've worked really hard in my life, and I'm a very kind person. Mm -hmm. um, um, why would you, people want to go and live on the moon? Well, why not stay on Earth? Because you can go outside, go for a swim. You know, going out it's a romantic base. idea right now. Uh -huh. um, people think, oh my God, anything to get off Earth. Well, the realities are very different. Um, I can't imagine anybody staying on the moon longer than three months at a time. Mm -hmm. They might do that once, maybe twice a year. Mm -hmm. um, if you stay longer than that, your bones are going to start to honeycomb. 
you're going to lose your musculature. Mm. You're going to create uh, certain anomalies that are not good for you. Mm. Ocular ones, aren't they? They're finding out that you know astronauts are in space. They get real pressure on the eyes. And right. Yeah. Yeah. So There's a whole field of uh, um, medicine that's evolved, space medicine, so that people can actually understand what it is that human beings go through. Space is not a friendly thing for humans. You know, we're so fortunate to live on a planet that provides us with all of this wonderful protection. Mm. Um, but you start getting outside this, and it's very difficult. <laughs> very quick. Yeah, <laughs> right. I've had six conversations with different aliens mm -hmm. that are not from this planet. They, what do they want? They're here to study us. They've actually been here for 40,000 years, observing us. Okay. Hence the buildings on the back side of the moon and on Mars. Yeah, the crystal, the glass structures. Yeah, glass structures. So... And they are huge. Yeah. I'm telling you, they are bigger than the building we're in right now. They sit on like five acres. Yeah. They're just yeah. huge. Yeah. So they're not going to kill us or anything? Like oh, no, 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 no. This is a planet that's very special in the universe. Yeah. Yeah, well, there are not many planets like this around or... In our universe, I don't have a number for you. Mm -hmm. I wish I could tell you that I did, but I don't. Mm -hmm. um, the conversations that I've had, I've sort of hinted that maybe they should tell me. <laughs> um, I'm not important enough for them to discuss it with me. What do they think of your moon setting? They think it's silly. <laughs> Why are you doing this? You know, nobody can live there. <laughs> I said, well, then you really haven't studied human beings, have you? No, yeah. we will get a good go. Yes, we will. Yeah. How long do you think it will be? 20, 30 years, maybe? I think by 2020, the lunar and the sea block are going to be on the I'm very aware.